The Children of Odin, a retelling of the Eddas and Volsen saga by Parik Kolum, with art done by Willy Pogani. How Brock Brought Judgment on Loki It was then that Loki, with the wish of making the Iser and the Vanir friendly to him once more, brought out the wonderful things he had gained from the dwarves. The spear, Gungir, and the boat, Skidbladnir. The Iser and the Vanir marveled at the things so wonderful. Loki gave the spear as a gift to Odin, and to Frey, who was chief of the Vanir, he gave the boat Skidbladnir. All Asgard rejoiced that things so wonderful and so helpful had been brought to them. And Loki, who had made a great show in giving these gifts, said boastingly, None but the dwarves who work for me can make such things. There are other dwarves, but they are unhandy as they are misshapen. The dwarves who are my servants are the only ones who can make such wonders. Now, Loki, in his boastfulness, had said a foolish thing. There were other dwarves besides those who had worked for him, and one of these was there in Asgard. All unknown to Loki, he stood in the shadow of Odin's seat, listening to what was being said. Now he went over the Loki, his little unshapely form trembling with rage. Brock, the most spiteful of all the dwarves. Ha! Loki, you boaster! He roared. You lie in your words. Sindri, my brother, who had scorned to serve you, is the best smith in Svartheim. The Iser and the Vanir laughed to see Loki outfaced by Brock the Dwarf in the middle of his boastfulness. As they laughed, Loki grew angry. Be silent, Dwarf, he said. Your brother will know about a smith's work when he goes uh, to the dwarves who are my friends and learn something from them. He learned from the dwarves who are your friends. My brother Sindri learned from the dwarves who are your friends. Brock roared in a greater rage than before. The things you have brought out of Svartheim would not be noticed by the Iser and the Vanir if they were put besides the things that my brother Sindri can make. Sometime, uh, sometime we will try your brother Sindri and see what he can do, said Loki. Try now! Try now! Uh, Brock shouted. I wager my head against yours, Loki, uh, that his work would make the dwellers in Asgard laugh at your boasting. I will take your wager, said Loki. My head against yours, and glad will I be to see that ugly head of yours off your misshapen shoulders. The Iser, uh, will judge uh, whether my brother's work is not the best that ever came out of Svartheim, and they will see to it that you will pay your wager, Loki, the head off your shoulders. Will ye not sit in judgment, O dwellers of Asgard? We will sit in judgment, said the Iser. Then, still full of rage, Brock the Dwarf went down to Svartheim, to the place where his brother Sindri worked. There was Sindri in his glowing forge, working with bellows and anvil and hammers beside him, and around him masses of metal, gold and silver, copper and iron. Brock told his tale how he had wagered his head against Loki's, uh, that Sindri could make things more wonderful than the spear and the boat that Loki had brought into Asgard. You were right in what you said, my brother said Sindri, you shall not lose your head to Loki, but the two of us must work at what I am going to forge. It will be your work to keep the fire so that it will neither blaze up nor die down for a single instant. If you can keep the fire, as I tell you, we will forge a wonder. Now, brother, keep your hands upon the bellows and keep the fire under your control. Then, into the fire, Sindri threw... Not a piece of metal, but a pigskin. Brock kept his hands on the bellows, working it so that the fire neither died down nor blazed up for a single instant. And in the glowing fire, the pigskin swelled itself up into a strange shape. But Brock was not left to work the bellows in peace. Into the forge flew a gadfly. It lighted on Brock's hands and stung them. The dwarf screamed in pain, but his hands still held the bellows, working to keep the fire steady, for he knew the gladfly was Loki, and that Loki was striving to spoil Sindri's work. Again, the gadfly stung his hands, but Brock, though his hands felt as if they were pierced with hot irons, still worked the bellows so that the fire did not blaze up or die down for a single instant. Sindri came and looked into the fire. Over the shape uh, that was rising there, he said the words of magic. The gadfly had flown away, and Sindri bade his uh, brother cease working. 
He took out the thing that had been shaped into the fire, and he worked it over with his hammer. It was a wonder indeed. A boar, all golden, that could fly through the air and that shed light from its bristles as it flew. Brock forgot the pain in his hands and screamed with joy. This is the greatest of wonders, he said. The dwellers in Asgard will have to give judgment against Loki. I shall have Loki's head. But, Sindri said, The boar golden bristle may not be judged as great a wonder as the spear Gungir or the boat Skidbadnir. We must make something more wonderful still. Work the bellows as before, brother, and do not let the fire die down or blaze up for a single instant. Then Sindri took up a piece of gold that was so bright it lighted up the dark cavern that the dwarves worked in. He threw the piece of gold into the fire, and then he went uh, to make something else and left Brock to work the bellows. The gadfly flew in again. Brock did not know it was there until it lighted on the back of his neck. It stung him till Brock felt the pain that was wrenching him apart. But still, he kept his hands to the bellows, working it so that the fire neither blazed up nor died down for a single instant. When Sindri came to look into the fire, Brock was not able to speak for pain. Again, Sindri said the magic words over the gold that was being smelted in the fire. He took it out of the glow and worked it over on the main anvil. Then, in a while, he showed Brock something that looked like the circle of the sun. A splendid... Uh, Arm ring, my brother, he said, an arm ring for a god's right arm, and this ring has hidden wonders. Every ninth a night, eight rings like itself will drop from this arm ring, for this is Dropnir, the ring of increase. Ah, to Odin, the father of the gods, this ring shall be given, said Brock, and Odin will have to declare that nothing so wonderful or so profitable to the gods was ever brought to Asgard. Oh, Loki, cunning Loki, I shall have thy head in spite of thy tricks. Be not too hasty, brother, said Sindri. What we have done so far is good, but better still must be the thing that will make the dwellers in Asgard give the judgment that delivers Loki's head to thee. Work as before, brother. Do not let the fire blaze up or die down for a single instant. This time, Sindri threw into the fire a bar of iron. Then he went away to fetch his hammer that would shape it. Brock worked the bellows as before, but only his hands were steady, for every other part of him was trembling with the expectation of the gadfly's sting. He saw the gadfly dart into the forge. He screamed as it flew round and round him, searching out a place where it might sting him most fearfully. It lighted down on his forehead, just between his eyes. The first sting it gave took out the sight from his eyes. It stung again, and Brock felt the blood flowing down. Darkness filled the cave. Brock tried to keep his hand steady on the bellows, but he did not know whether the fire was blazing up or dying down. He shouted, and Sindri hurried up. Sindri said the magic words over the thing that was in the fire. Then he drew it out. An instant more, he said, and the work would have been perfect. But because you let the fire die down for an instant, the work is not as good as it might have been. He took what was shaped in the fire to the main anvil and worked over it. Then, when Brock's eyesight came back to him, he saw a great hammer. A hammer, all of iron. The handle did not seem to be long enough to balance the head. This was because the fire had died down for an instant while it was being formed. The hammer is Mjolnir. Uh, said Sindri, and it is the greatest of all the things that I am able to make. All in Asgard must rejoice to see this hammer. Thor only will be able to wield it. Now, I am not afraid of the judgment that the a dwellers in Asgard might give. Uh, the dwellers in Asgard will have to give judgment for us, Brock cried out. They will have to give judgment for us, and the head of Loki, my tormentor, will be given me. Uh, no more wonderful or more profitable gifts uh, than have ever been brought to Asgard, Sindri said. Thy head is saved. Thou will be able to take the head of Loki, who was insolent to us. Bring it here, and we will throw it into the fire in the forge. The Iser and the Vanir were sitting in the council house of Asgard when a train of dwarves appeared before them. Brock came at the head of the train, and he was followed by the band of dwarves carrying things of great weight. Brock and his attendants stood round the throne of Odin, and hearkened uh, to the words of the father of the gods. We know why you have come into Asgard out of Svartheim, Odin said. You have brought th things wonderful and profitable to the dwellers in Asgard. 
Let what you have brought be seen, a uh, Brock. If they are more wonderful and more useful than the things Loki brought at the Svartheim, the spear Gungir, and the boat Skid of Bladnir, we will give judgment for you. Then Brock commanded the dwarves who waited on him to show the dwellers in Asgard the first of the wonders that Sindri had made. They brought out the boar, Golden Bristle. Round and round the council house the boar flew, leaving a trail of brightness. The dwellers in Asgard said to one another that this was a wonder indeed. But none would say that the boar was a better thing to have in Asgard than a spear that would hit the mark. No matter how badly it was flung, or the boat skid led near, that would sail in any sea, and that could be folded up so small that it would fit in anyone's pocket. None would say that Golden Bristle was better than these wonders. To Frey, who was the chief of the Vanir, Brock gave the wondrous boar. Then the attending dwarves showed the arm ring that was as bright as the circle of the sun. All admired the noble ring. And when it was told how every ninth night this ring dropped eight rings of gold that were like itself, the dwellers in Asgard spoke aloud, saying that Dropnir, the ring of increase, was a wonder indeed. Hearing their voices raised, Brock looked triumphantly at Loki, who was standing there with his lips drawn closely together. To Odin, the father of the gods, Brock gave the noble arm ring. Then he commanded the attending dwarves to lay before Thor the hammer Mjolnir. Thor took the hammer up and swung it round his head. As he did so, he uttered a great cry, and the eyes of the dwellers in Asgard lightened up as they saw Thor with the hammer Mjolnir in his hands. Their eyes lightened up, and from their lips came the cry, This is a wonder, a wonder indeed! With this hammer in his hand, none can withstand Thor, our champion! No greater thing has ever come to Asgard than the hammer Mjolnir! Then Odin, the father of the gods, spoke from his throne, giving judgment. The hammer Mjolnir that the dwarf uh, Brock, uh, brought to Asgard is a thing wonderful indeed and profitable to the gods. In Thor's hands it can crush mountains and hurl the giant race from the ramparts of Asgard. Sindri the dwarf has forged a greater thing than the spear Gungir and the boat Skidbladnir. There can be no other judgment. Brock looked at Loki, showing his gnarled teeth. Now, Loki, yield your head! Yield your head! he cried. Do not ask such a thing, said Odin. Put any other penalty on Loki for mocking and torment you. Make him yield to you is the greatest thing that is in his power to give. Not so! Not so! screamed Brock. You dwellers in Asgard would shield one another. But what of me? Loki would have taken my head if I had lost the wager. Loki has lost his head to me. Let him kneel down now till I cut it off. Loki came forward, smiling with closed lips. I kneel before you, dwarf, he said. Take off my head. But be careful. Do not touch my neck. I did not bargain that you should touch my neck. If you do, I shall call the dwellers of Asgard to punish you. Brock uh, drew back with a snarl. Is this the judgment of the gods? he asked. The bargain you made, Brock, said Odin was an evil one, and all its evil consequences you must bear. Brock, enraged, looked upon Loki, and he saw that his lips were smiling. He stamped his feet in rage. Then he went out to Loki and said, I may not take your head, but I can do something that, with your lips that mock me. What would you do, dwarf? asked Thor. So Loki's lips together, said Brock, so that he would do no more mischief with his talk. You dwellers in Asgard cannot forbid me to do this. Down, Loki, on your knees before me. Loki looked round at the dwellers in Asgard, and he saw that their judgment was that he must kneel before the dwarf. He knelt down with a frown upon his brow. Draw your lips together, Loki, said Brock. Loki drew his lips together while his eyes flashed fire. With an owl that he took from his belt, a Brock pierced Loki's lips. He took out a thong and tightened them together. Then in triumph, the dwarf looked on Loki. Oh, Loki, he said. You boasted that the dwarves who worked for you were better crafted than Sindri, my brother. Your words have shown to be lies, and now you cannot boast for a while. Then Brock the dwarf, with great majesty, walked out of the council house of Asgard, and the attending dwarves marched behind him in procession. Down the passages into the earth the dwarves went, singing the song of Brock's victory over Loki. And in Svartheim, it was told forever how Sindri and Brock had prevailed.
In Asgard, now that Loki's lips were closed, there was peace and respite from mischief. No one amongst the eyes or the Vanir were sorry when Loki had to walk about in silence with his head bent low.